Head Fi Administrator Sean Chan kindly lent me first his M9 and second his M Type 240. Along for the ride came a gaggle of a spherical Zoomilux lenses. Wonderful all, sharp all, well illuminated all. And put together, the lot was worth north of 25 grand. Forlorn at the bottom of Sean's bag was the lens that is the subject of this video. Why was it left there? Well, I think it's because he's a perfectionist. He wants technical superiority. He's not only a nerd, he's a, a techie of supreme order. When shooting stills for clients, I use the newest Schneider Apo Digitar and Rotostock Apo Girinar digital lenses. Absolutely everything must be perfect. But when shooting for fun, I want an image that's worth remembering. I want to experience a thing in playback the way my eyes didn't see it. My love of fantasy is why I took this lens to Tokyo Disneyland. Despite preferring the out of focus rendering of the EF Zeiss 51.4, the Zoomalux Prehispherical 50 is now and has for years been my favorite fast 50mm lens. Like the Canon 35 II LTM, the E46 Zoomalux is another rangefinder lens that follows an SLR design aesthetic. It is a relatively long and heavy lens. It turns from infinity to 0.7 meters, which is its close focus range, in just over 100 degrees, and all of that with a light two-finger twist. On an M, that distance feels more precise. On an adapted camera like a Fujifilm X-Pro1 or a Sony a7R, it is reassuring. Minute, rocking twists between poles reveal minor but noticeable degrees of play. I have confirmed this in four different versions of this lens. The silver version of this lens, which tips the scales at 380 grams, isn't that heavy. However, when you put it on something like an A7R or even an X-Pro1, the camera tips forward. And what happens there is it just feels awkward. It's not like putting a big telephoto on a camera and you expect the weight. It's just that the cameras themselves are either too small, too chintzy, or too light, and that the lens just feels so much better and the balance between them isn't very good. Now, I think that mirrorless cameras are getting better, certainly better than they were when I originally penned this article in 2014, but they haven't come along far enough that I think the balance is great with a lens as heavy as 380 grams. Suffice it to say that when I originally borrowed this lens, I wasn't that happy with the combination of the A7R and the Zoomalux M. Sean was ready to sell me the lens, but for this reason, I wasn't ready to buy it. On a Leica M film or digital camera, on the other hand, it handles wonderfully. Free lenses will appreciate two specifics of this lens, its length and the flush rear lens element. The image circle is pretty tight, but small movements work like the Dickens. This lens is solid, smooth, and classically built. On a Sony a7R, individual pixels are keenly visible in the center of the frame, even wide open. Toward the edge, they are not. I have no idea if that is because of field curvature, or because the lens simply isn't tack sharp in the corners. But then again, this 50mm Zoomilux wasn't built for flat fields. It was built to draw in that soft, human way. Just look at that bokeh. Not merely smooth, but artistically flourished. Viney but smooth, out-of-focus structural elements create contrast between spatial details, and even when defocused, they retain more of the original shape of the object they are capturing. There is nothing quite like it. Like many fast 50mm lenses out there, the Prehispherical Zoomalux produces quite a bit of linear distortion. Image borders out from the center bulge and straight lines bend. The tiny Canon 35-2 LTM, itself a copy of the 1950s 35mm Zoomicron, inherits some of the Prehispherical 50mm Zoomalux's flair, but in a harsher and less dreamy way. More than anything, I like that this lens dekes out the worst bubble bouquet and also any sort of centripetal pull or centrifugal push that makes the image too dizzy. Of all the classic lenses that exhibit swirly bouquet, this lens retains the best parts of the swirl. It's not too dizzy, it's not too defocused, it does it in a way that dekes the worst of all the worlds and just retains the best bits. Unfortunately, prices have jumped from over a, a grand almost six years ago to two grand five and a half years ago and in the last six months it's jumped even further. You can still sometimes find deals or bargains around the $2,000 mark but generally this lens is no longer the bargain alternative to the aspherical 50 lens. 
Finally, I've got to mention that I no longer own this lens. In fact, I don't own a digital Leica anymore at all. My event business was basically destroyed because of the, you know what it is. And I'm trying to restructure in some area that allows me to keep doing things with people that involves photography, uh, but isn't in the classic sort of event venue. All I have left are the photographs I took, the memories I have using the lens, and a deep and heavy respect for anyone that uses this lens over the spherical version. Thank you very much.